Hey everyone, welcome to Contra Thoughts. My name is Richard, this is episode 18, coming at you right now. Oh, hello. <clears throat> welcome to episode 18. <clears throat> Wrong pipe. How do you, how do we drink? <clears throat> Like, you've been drinking your whole life and you still do it wrong. Like, But you're not supposed to get water or any liquid in your lungs. It's bad news, bears. This is Peruvian today. It's very delicious. Also, I have a little friend with me. This is a Trader Joe's peanut butter cup. It's going to be a review of Trader Joe's food. Forget other stuff. Have you ever had one of these? They're legit. They're dark chocolate. Some people get afraid of dark chocolate. They're like a little, you know, scared of it or something. They're not really that dark. I mean, there's like gradations. Anyway, they just destroy Reese's. If it was like a cage match, it'd be like Conor McGregor as Trader Joe's and like, I don't know, a second grade boy who's asthmatic. Like, it wouldn't even be close. That's how good they are. You can keep that. You can quote that. Put that on a shirt if you want to. All right. We're talking about David Platt and the wokey, wokeness, or scare tactics, CRT, scare tactics, what's really going on. Uh, but before that, before that, I want to say thank you uh, to all the new subscribers. I've, what, it's like four times as many subscribers as I had uh, like a month ago. Like literally, like I had 20 subs, 22 subs, and now I'm almost up to 80. And I'm really thankful for that. I know that's you know maybe not as uh, big of a deal for some people, but I'm very, very thankful because I'm just a guy. And literally just giving my two cents. Why is that two cents? Why isn't it more or less? I don't know. That's weird. Um, so I'm very thankful, though, honestly, though, because it's... We all have internal dialogues. We all think about this different stuff. And sometimes we think, ah, does anybody else think this way? I mean, you know, I talk to somebody in my church or at my school or at work, and it's kind of like they seem like that, but I'm really sure. And even if they're a believer and maybe they still line up, you know, cross all the T's and dot all the I's theologically, or, you know, they really look like this and that, but you're still like, ah, but really? Um, and this helps me not only find other people like you, uh, but also to talk about stuff <laughs> in general. And uh, it's something that I just, I really enjoy and I hope you enjoy it too. So the goal ultimately of this channel is to be against the world, as it says, contra mundum, pro mundo. And it's not just doing it to be cantankerous or cranky, but to help the world understand not only what biblical Christianity is, but also that their thinking is wrong, that naturalistic materialism is wrong, that, that thinking that you know, we can become a god or that there are a multitude of gods or that there is no god at all, that that's wrong thinking, that there is a god who is there, he is present, uh, and he has revealed himself in the Holy Scripture, most specifically through his son, Jesus Christ. So um, he is the word become flesh, John 4, 1, 14, and dwelling among us and so on. And we, we know that in the last days, God spoke to us by the fathers and the prophets, but in these in in these or in the former days, in these last days, he has spoken to us by his son, whom he appointed heir of all things. And that, of course, is Hebrews chapter 1. So that's that's the goal. So again, thank you. I'm very thankful. Please share. Please like. Uh, it really does. Uh, and, and subscribe if you're not subscri subscriptioned. Is that a word? Subscriptioned? I don't think so. But let's make it a word. I subscriptioned. Put it on a shirt. Also, I was told recently, who will remain nameless? Um, that this kind of shirt kind of looks like a, like a scrubs. I don't know. Can you guys kind of tell? Uh, you're probably watching this on your phone. Anyway, I like it. It makes me look super tan. Tan man bad. Orange man bad. Look how light my arms are though. But notice none of this is white. We're going to do another video on color swatches at the paint store soon. So look out for that. Anyway, we've got some stuff happening within evangelicalism. I really don't like that term. It's so dumb. And the world just uses it like it's a political mechanism or something. And I love when it was like 2016, like so many evangelicals voted for Donald Trump. Like evangelicals are like people that go to church like once a week or something like that, or <laughs> once a week, once a month. And you're like, but like, 
And just as an aside, maybe you're like, evangelical, what's the point? I don't know the difference. I'm just a Christian. The evangelicalism is 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 not new by any means. Uh, Carl F.H. Henry, not related. I wish I was. Um, from yesteryear, 50, 60 years ago. He was very popular back then. Uh, he started Christianity Today, the magazine, and it was basically, it was a push against the progressive Christians of the day, the mainline Protestants and so on. And the evangelicalism is well, what's the evangel is the gospel, the euangelion, that's the Greek term for the proclamation of the good news, which of course is Jesus Christ came into the world to save sinners, and he's resurrected and now sits at the right hand of the Father, the majesty on high. And so these things matter. A lot of Christians out there in the world are like, yeah, you just got to be a good person, you got to be nice, you got to do this, you got to do that. And it's not about uh, salvation from actual sin by an actual savior, but just kind of like, well, you know, you just, just be a good person. You know, believe in God and, you know, it'll all, it'll all work out. But you could, again, say just evangelicalism is just basically biblical Christianity. Some people will still use the word fundamentalist. That's not great because fundamentalism is kind of its own thing altogether. Uh, very much like, you know, don't watch movies, KJV only, women wear dresses only, men, you know, wear this, do, and so on and so forth. <clears throat> if you're like that, that's fine. But it's not, I don't subscribe to it. And I think there's good warrant to not subscribe to it, biblical warrant, but that's not what this video is about. It's about coffee and Trader Joe's. No. So David Platt is in the news. The news. So McLean Bible Church, <clears throat> David Platt is the pastor of McLean Bible Church. And a couple of things. Number one, David Platt is a very passionate, very talented, far more talented than me and a lot of other guys. Uh, he's very young. He got into the big Eva train early. Uh, he said some stupid stuff in the last couple of years about being a white pastor and talking about white privilege and just, just this kind of jargon that I think he means well. I'm just going to kind of give him the benefit of the doubt. But as being such a Bible person, Bible pastor, he's still like, oh, but I'm going to use the world's terms and the terms of, 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 of the enemy. And we don't, we don't use the terms of the enemy. We use the terms of scripture because we have everything pertaining to life and godliness in the scripture. We have to pull it out. That's what excavating exegesis, pulling out and, and, and proclaiming it both in preaching and teaching, also just in reading and living it out. And that's what we need to do. We excavate out as if the Bible is a mine because it is like a gold mine and you're pulling out the nuggets. The nuggets don't just appear, right? If they appeared... Well, then they'd be like gravel and they wouldn't be worth very much. But gold is very expensive because it's hard to get. There's not much gold compared to just regular rocks, right? And so you have to excavate out of the scripture. So we need to use what's in the Bible because the Bible is sufficient. The Bible is in error. The Bible is infallible. And these are all these things. Or it's not. And if it's not, then you should just throw it all away because there's no middle ground. Because you try, we can just look. I mean, we could spend all day, hours and hours and hours of the amount of examples, if I had the time, which I don't, but if I did, the amount of people, the amount of churches, the amount of organizations that have tried to say, all right, well, we're going to do this, but not do this. We'll take this part and this part, but we'll deny this part. We'll deny this part. We'll, we'll accept this thing, but we're not going to accept that thing. You know, Jesus is great. He's a moral teacher, but he's not God, but he's also this. He's a savior, but he's not these things. There is a heaven, but there's not a hell. There's like judgment comes, but not this way. And, and all this back and forth, and it doesn't, satisfy anything. Either deny it outright and then face God at judgment day. Or embrace Christ, walk in faith and not by sight, walking with your shepherd because you are a sheep if you're trusting him and knowing that you're going to stumble, you're going to fall, you're going to break your leg, you're going to get bloody and you get back up. You don't sit there and think, I don't need you. I don't need a shepherd. I can do whatever I want. That's most people's problem. They think they can do whatever they want. They can live however they want, go wherever they want, spend their money however they want, marry whoever they want, sleep with whoever they want, say whatever they want, on and on and on. So David Platt, McLean Bible Church. Um, I don't know David Platt, of course. I've heard him preach a couple times in person, very passionate, uh, I read Radical several years ago. It's funny, being on the West Coast, and shout out, drop me, let me know. I'd be curious who's watching this. Uh, where, you're, where are you coming from? Uh, just maybe just say your state, or if you want to say your city, that's fine too. But I'm just curious. I'm originally from California, uh, and my wife and I moved to Kentucky to go to Southern Seminary. 
not woke, don't worry. Um, and I loved it. It was a great experience. I heard him plat there at least once or twice. Um, and it was just a great, great, great time. I think it's still a good school. I would change certain things and I would fire certain professors if it was up to me, but it's not. And David Platt, part of the Together for the Gospel guys. But again, that's kind of fissured a little bit. MacArthur and some of these other guys were very much in that camp and now they're not. And honestly, I think there's been an East-West division. I really do. Because again, being from California, California wasn't touched by slavery, wasn't touched by civil rights, wasn't touched by Jim Crow. And that really makes a difference. And I think there's a lot of guilt either real guilt or made up guilt from the, the culture that says, yeah, you really need to be guilty about this. You really need to feel bad about these things still. And you're like, but we already repented. I didn't even have great grandparents that owned slaves or this or these things. Um, and even if you did repent, the problem is with biblical Christianity, or the problem isn't with biblical Christianity, it's with the world because the world doesn't have any mechanism for actual forgiveness and repentance. Remember that. Critical race theory, intersectionality, all those things, they're always about grievances. They're always about constantly going back and going back and being on the treadmill of apologies. You're never going to say sorry enough. And that was actually my own testimony, feeling like I had to be good enough and sorry enough for God when if it's up to you to save yourself, you're condemned, period. But praise be to God that Jesus Christ came into the world to save sinners, to seek and to save the lost. People go to a doctor when they're sick, not when they're well. And so the great physician, the great shepherd of our souls is the one who is the, the rescuer. He is the one who brings true repentance tr or true forgiveness through repentance in him. Again, it's all in him, not in the world, not in some system or something else. So being from California, a lot of times I, I don't really... I'm both thankful and kind of confused <laughs> because it's like, I don't see the big deal about this thing or that thing. Why do we still talk about these things? You know, sure, Jim Crow was more recent than slavery and the Civil Rights Act of 1964 was more recent than um, Jim Crow or redlining and other things. But again, none of those things were happening in California. And it's like, it's as if people don't really want to solve this problem. It really doesn't seem like, whether it's in the church or in the GOP or even definitely in, in the Democratic Party as well, Nobody really wants to solve it because if you have a boogeyman, you always have somebody to fight against. You always have somebody to, to, to attack and, and marching orders, right? That's why we saw, we saw this for 20 years with, you know, weapons of mass destruction and Al-Qaeda and terrorists. And we're always scared and this and this and this. Now it's invisible enemies called a virus. But if you have something to attack, if you could vanquish it, right? We, we, we could solve most of these problems pretty easily, <laughs> Especially, very easily if people actually would repent and believe in Christ and trust him and give up their stuff and junk and not live for that, but live for him. But I digress. McLean Bible Church, David Platt, very good guy overall. He's a great preacher. I assume he's a good pastor. Um, he was a pastor in Birmingham. He was the president, very, very uh, evangelistic, missions, all that stuff. You know, like I said, I read Radical. That's what I was getting at. I read Radical. Um, after I had listened to, this is like 12 years ago, a response at the Shepherds Conference to the book Radical. And it was interesting. It was not, he was not really agreeing with uh, David Platt. And that, of course, is Shepherds Conference, Grace, Grace Community Church, Grace to You, Master's College and Seminary, uh, John MacArthur's Camp. Now, that's very much more my heart. I don't agree with uh, everything, for sure. That, that that camp says. But if I were to hitch my wagon to someone, it would be MacArthur because, not just MacArthur, but just their style of ministry. Ultimately, because so much of this has gotten so big, whether it's SBC or just non-denominational craziness, it's just so much either yoked up with the world, either the, the, the GOP, you know, Trump loving, everything like that, or they're anti-Trump loving and they want to look cool with the world. Right. And, oh, look at me. Look at me. Oh, I'm this. I'm that. You know, I, I'm I'm relatable. I'm cool. I'm hip. That's what we've seen with guys like Matt Chandler and J.D. Greer and others. They're trying to be very, very cushy and squishy with just kind of molding in with the world. It's like the world doesn't give a rip about you. Even if you have the nicest, best church with the best music, the best, most softest message, which, by the way, find it in the scripture that says you should do that, please. Or even something that hints at that. The prophets, the apostles, 
Christ himself. But it's easy. Trust me, it's easy. I've preached a number of times. Not a lot, but, you know, several dozen times. And sometimes it's like, oh, should I say this? Not to say it, you know, be inflammatory or, or whatever, but I don't know. But, you know, if you're preaching the gospel, the gospel is that balm that will not only harm you in the sense that it will convict you. The Holy Spirit convicts the world of sin and judgment, but then also brings that cooling balm of the gospel. That's, that's the law and the gospel, right? That's you're, you're condemned, you're a sinner, but praise be to God, there is a solution, right? It's not just keep the law. Like I used to think when I was a kid, even in my 20s, got to keep the Ten Commandments. Well, what are the Ten Commandments? I don't really, I, I'm not really sure. Well, I know you're not supposed to murder or commit adultery, except for Jesus says if you commit adultery, you're, you're looking with lust, you've already committed adultery, and you've been angry, you've already murdered. So everybody's an angry, uh, a murderous adulterer, right? Everybody. All that to say David Platt is Big Eva. Now, just because you're Big Eva doesn't mean you're always bad. So, apparently, um, McLean Bible Church had a business meeting, and they're appointing elders. It was a Wednesday night, Wednesday night business meeting, and Platt preached um, on the 4th of July, so it was several weeks ago, and then religious religion news service commented on July 20th, and then again on the 25th. Platt, there's kind of back and forth. We'll watch a clip of Platt preaching. Uh, talking about what's going on at McLean Bible Church. This church family, we had a meeting this last Wednesday night for the purpose of affirming God's call in the lives of potential elders, pastors in our church family. I mentioned last Sunday, this is one of the most important things we do as followers of Jesus in the church to recognize and celebrate God's grace in biblically qualified leaders he raises up among us. Yet... When it came time to affirm them, because no one had expressed any biblical concern about them, meaning we were ready to gather around and pray for them and their wives at the end of our meeting, we were not able to because, and I want you to listen closely to the words I'm about to say, a small group of people inside and outside this church coordinated a divisive effort to use disinformation in order to persuade others to vote these men down as part of a broader effort to take control of this church. Using disinformation and using your private information, the leaders of this group have somehow gotten a membership list improperly accessed from our database and they are using it to improperly contact members of MBC, actively sharing that list with our names, addresses, phone numbers, birth dates, with other members of this group and other members of MBC in ways that can cause real harm in light of your private information. Specifically from our Tyson's location where I'm standing, Right now, almost, well, all of our other locations were almost unanimous in their affirmation of these elders. They were all in the range of 94 to 100% in favor of them. But here at Tyson's, there was a coordinated effort started by a small group of people and expanding to others to deceive people into thinking that if they voted for these men, then our church would, and so here are some of the lies that people were being told as they entered the building in that lobby that night. If these elders were affirmed, people were being told we would sell this Tyson's building. So a vote to affirm these elders was a vote to sell this building. We had people share with us after the meeting that they voted no on these men because people they trusted had told them as they came into the meeting, they were walking around sharing this while we were singing in worship that if these elders were affirmed, they would lead us to sell this building. So those members voted no. And then they came to us later saying they were sorry they had voted that way, wanted their vote back once they realized the truth. And they were not just told that we would sell this building. Some were told that we would sell this building to Muslims so they could build a mosque here and we could give the proceeds to the Southern Baptist Convention. 
Now you might think there is no way people believe that. And I wish I was making this up. But we have emails where this is being passed around to members in the most inflammatory way possible. We have explained and have in writing from the SBC, we're not a member of the Southern Baptist Convention. And others were being told Wednesday night, if we affirm these elders, and just hear all the buzzwords and scare tactics that were used, NBC would be gone. Down a road of leaving the gospel behind, leaving the Bible behind, embracing liberal theology and cultural Marxism, like the author of the Communist Manifesto, that we would change our stance on abortion and sexuality, that we would allow critical race theory and Black Lives Matter and defunding the police to drive our agenda as a church. I could go on and on with ideas that are unquestionably untrue and in many ways completely unreasonable. The disheartening thing is, before God, we have walked through God's word on so many of these issues and had countless face-to-face meetings with different people, clearly showing how these things are totally fabricated. Yet most, almost all of the questions we have heard are less about God's word and more about what this blog or that Facebook post says, as if those sources of information are anywhere close to the authority of this word. Last, first of all, just first of all, um, my phone, because, you know, it's easy, get a better connection. McLean Bible Church, Leesburg, Pike, Vienna, Virginia. So right there, it's hard to tell, maybe I'll just put it on the screen, forget that, Um, is on the Southern Baptist website. So I don't know why he even had to say that. We're going to give it to the Southern Baptist. We're not a Southern Baptist church. So like, but it says you are. <laughs> like Now, again, there's probably some reason. There's probably some discrepancy. I'm going to give him the benefit of the doubt. But you're a simple Google search. Uh, I use DuckDuckGo. Hey, um, they're not paying me. Not yet. But seriously, though. You are a Southern Baptist church, according to the Southern Baptist website. Now, again, it says like there's 50,000 churches. Sometimes you'll say 40,000 churches. Sometimes you'll say 45,000 churches. Sometimes you'll say 47,500. There's an old saying. It's, uh, you know, the the SBC is, what, like 20 million members, and the FBI can't find half of them. Uh, it's pretty funny. But we'll see that more in a moment, that church membership matters. It matters a lot. But what Platt is saying, again, I'm not going to say he's lying out and out. Because he might not be lying. He might not know, although I would assume he did, especially since he was the president of one of the SBC entities for a number of years in that as the IMB. So kind of weird, kind of weird. But notice what he says. He said there's a calculated effort and this and this and they're, they're, uh, they're lying and so on and so forth. So first and foremost, um, first of all, lying's wrong, right? We all know that, right? In the Ninth Commandment, uh, multiple other places. We see at the end of the Bible, liars will have their place in the lake of fire. I've said that before. Lying's not good. Lying, lying is, 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 is a really heinous sin that a lot of people these days, they just don't really care about. You know, sexual abuse. Oh, yeah, we're going to get all upset about sexual abuse. It's like, well, yeah, okay. Get upset about that, but what about lying? What about divorce? What about you know, pornography, what about abortion? What about these other things that are also bad? I mean, they're also sin. But I'm not gonna really take a side and say, oh, David Platt's wrong and he's he's scared of the 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 conservatives and this and that. I'm not gonna say that. Because ultimately I don't know. Um, it's very weird. Like I said, there was a business meeting like the end of June. He's preaching this sermon that you just watched July 4th. And then there's comments on it. We'll see, watch another video here uh, from Ali Beth Stuckey, who I would highly recommend, by the way. Um, she's great. Um, she's got a lot of commentary, does a lot more stuff than, than I do, and probably has a little bit more uh, variety. But it's a little clip of her talking about David French writing about David Platt. Which David French is, I wouldn't recommend him. But we can look at a few passages. 
from 1 Corinthians 6, 7, for example. No, hold on. Not that one. We'll look at that in a second. Ephesians 4, 3. Make every effort to keep unity of the Spirit through the bond of peace. Eager to maintain the unity of the Spirit in the bond of peace. That's NIV and ESV. John 17, 23. I in them and you in me, this is Jesus, that they may become perfectly one so that the world may know that you sent me and loved them even as I, you loved me. Even loved them, even that loved them, even as you loved me. So two passages right there. There's many more. But talk about unity. Now, I don't doubt that this situation happened at McLean Bible Church, and I don't doubt that David Platt is doing the right thing in addressing it. Now he again has said some ridiculous things about. Uh, discrepancies and disparities and we need to do something about it but the problem by the way anytime people talk about these things they don't have any solutions I've had conversations with friends and co-workers in the past especially and there's not really any ever sol any solution given it's always just well yeah you know systemic racism or s systemic injustices and you know past disparities and equi equity and da, da 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 and you're like okay yeah I mean there was racism there is racism I'm sure still is it as bad as it used to be no of course not um, just look around. You look at the amount of people that are successful and the amount of people that are not, you know, marching in a Klan rally uh, or anything even close to that. But again, notice what they've done, and people do this all the time, the leftist ideal, is they move the goalposts, as it were, right? You, you know, the analogy, of course, is 100 yards is a football field. And 50-yard line, right? And you're marching down into the territory and you score a touchdown. The goal post is right there. You kick a field goal. You've got seven points, six points for the touchdown, one point for the field goal. And when someone says they're moving the goal post, they're doing this now, especially with all the um, mask mandates and lockdowns and all the craziness that's going on in the world, which I might cover, I might not. I just don't, I don't know if I have enough time really. Um, but they're just moving it further down. So you've gone, you know, you're at the halfway Maybe this goes without saying, but, you know, say you're at the 50-yard line and you've gone 50 yards, you're about to score a touchdown, but, oh, they've moved the goalpost. Now it's another 20 yards down. Now, of course, nobody actually does that in football. It's not possible. But the concept, the phil phil philosophical concept of it is to say, well, you just got to do a little bit further. You got to get a little bit more. You got eh, eh, 20 more yards, five more yards, 10 more yards, and then you'll score a touchdown. But that's never the case. That never actually happens, right? That's where that analogy comes from. Maybe that's, you know, beating a dead horse, but they're moving the goalposts and they're moving the goalposts in this discussion the last five to seven years now is redefining racism, not as animus, as hatred for someone based on how they look, based on the tint of melanin and how much they have or how little, uh, where they're from, what they sound like, the food they eat, the language they speak. If you don't like somebody based on those things, that's racist. It's not just somebody with lighter melanin versus someone with darker melanin. Um, there are plenty of places. I mean, just look at Rwanda in 1994, I believe it was. There was a genocide. And mass amounts of people were hacking each other to bits with machetes. And they looked the same. And yet, just complete odds at each other. And a lot of that was through propaganda. A lot of that was through radio and pamphlets. And the same type of things that are happening now, dividing Americans. That's how... The elites work, right? They, that's how, if you if you have a structure and you have all these free people, liberty-loving people, because ultimately we have individuals. You can't compel consciences to do certain things, right? You, you can't force somebody to believe something. You work as Christians, we're called to, you know, woo somebody and and argue all day long, as we see Paul do in Acts and other places, talking about saying this is better. This is the best argument. If your argument's good, if your philosophy, your worldview is good, then yeah, everybody should adopt it. The problem is leftist ideology, commie ideology, and so on isn't good. It doesn't work. So then they have to divide people. And then they come in with the solution, quote unquote. We're seeing, you know, and have been seeing the outrageous uh, craziness that's happening in Cuba and even places like Haiti for different reasons. But a horrible, horrible government, Cuba even worse because they're actually communist, and oppressing the people and people revolting because I want my freedom. I have these God-given rights. That's why the United States is such... An amazing country because these things are recognized by God, from God, not from the government. So unity is ultimately at stake here in the Clean Bible Church and really any church. Uh, and these things matter a lot. Now, again, I don't know David Platt at all. 
so he's addressing these things. But they're saying there's, you know, a group of people that rallied people together to vote against these three guys. Well, let, did we stop and think, well, who are these guys? Who are some of these people? Are they just normal, biblically qualified guys? Probably not, right? Is anyone asking that question? Did David Platt ask that question? No. But he has, you know, leaned left in certain things, especially with uh, some of the ideology and, and giving some of that over in a hope, I think, to, you know, win people to Jesus or, or be a good neighbor, quote unquote, or something. The, the problem is you're not doing that. You can't give field, as it were, to your enemy in hopes of winning your enemy. They're going to say, thanks for the territory. We're going to keep pressing forward, right? They're never going to be satisfied with that at all. Disinformation, right? He's talking about disinformation, misinformation, selling the property, giving it to Muslims. Okay, why? first of all, why would they do that? <laughs> why would they do that? Where would this church go? I mean, did any of these people actually do this? And the other question is, is this actually happening? No. I assume it's happening. He says that there's email evidence. I'm not going to side with David Platt and I'm not going to side with the other people because I don't know and I'm not going to pass a judgment on that. But what we must do, if we're Christians, if we're really seeking to love Jesus more than our power and our prestige and our prominence, right? If we're looking for more than that, even if it's just a simple uh, uh, virtue signal on Twitter or on Facebook, YouTube, whatever, or a massive guy like David Platt, who's a huge name, he's a huge name, most people know David Platt. But you got to ask these questions, right? Because we've seen this even with the plagiarism stuff and in the SBC with uh, Ed Litton. And we've seen this with other people coming out and these other things, you know, in the last few years, especially in the SBC. And SBC is the biggest denomination. That's why it gets so much press. But why, why aren't people asking the opposite question, right? They're doing this with all the, all the vaccine stuff and the other things. But They're especially not- as Christians, like the world's going to do that. Okay, but as Christians, should they not seek out this? I mean, his, he just he's just assuming these people are a bunch of, I don't know, hooded clan members, I guess, or something. But why would they do this? And further, let's watch another video and see, and we'll talk about that. that night, here was the result. So our church constitution requires 75% of members at a meeting to affirm elders. And people came here that night who were recruited by this group to vote that night, who had moved away to other states. We heard about people driving in from Florida to Maine. People who were actively serving at other churches came back to vote. People who are no longer members of this church all showing up to vote no on these elders, creating all kinds of challenges with who gets a ballot to vote or not. And instead of forcing our staff and volunteers to sort through all that information on the spot, we gave out provisional ballots to people who may or may not have been a member. And even with all of those challenges and all of this disinformation, the final count in favor of these elders ranged anywhere between 70 to 78% of those who voted, depending on which ballots would be accepted from active members of NBC and which ones would be rejected from people who are not active members of NBC, which means that the final outcome... All right, so did you catch that? So what he's saying is, first of all, this is totally a Southern Baptist church. I don't know what, like, they're operating exactly like the Southern Baptist Convention, even though they claim not to be, even though they totally are, according to the website, but whatever. Um, Pulling members from Florida, from Maine, people who aren't normally there, inactive members, he says, and other things. This is why, pastors... This is why, and and church leaders, just church members in general, there needs to be a list of people who are on the membership role, and then those are the people who are there. Now, there might be a handful of other people, depending on how large your church is. We're struggling with this with my church right now, much smaller church, of course, than McLean Bible Church, but there's way more people on the rolls than there are who are resident in here, serving, being part of this church, giving, singing, uh, being part of praying, having fellowship meals, hanging out, doing stuff, and all the rest. Why? Well, it's because people kind of put their name in a church role and they think, oh, I'm good with God. My name's on the role. Or worse still, they don't move it because they're lazy or, I, or churches don't take any initiative and take it off. So this having regenerate church membership, believing believers, right? Christ followers of uh, being a church member, 
and being resident and not having this weird like inactive status and all this other stuff. This is a perfect example of this going awry. Now, could this happen in my church? Yeah, it could, but we don't have as many big decisions to make. Now, these people somehow got a list and they contacted all these other people and said, oh, this church is going, they probably said, our church is going woke, they're leftist, but they do have some warrant, do they not? And that's the thing I want to ask, you know, somebody like Platt. Of course, he's probably not going to watch this, but regardless, if you're in a church like this, uh, those who are, are watching, you do have some warrant, right? We do have some warrant to look at, um, you know, the two decisions between Ed Litton and, and um, Mike Stone as president. Right? There's this guy and this guy. And when people say, oh, it's not that big of a deal. Anytime somebody says, oh, it's not that big of a deal. Oh, you're just being a so-and-so. You're just being a fundamentalist. You're just being this. You're just being that. You're, you're nitpicking. You're 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 fear-mongering, whatever. When you're really not, you're actually concerned because these people are saying these things. This guy, you know, marched in this rally, or this guy did this, or he said these things on Twitter. You know, can you qualify? What do you mean? Uh, these things matter a lot. And so David Platt is acting as though, oh, these people, you know, they're just a bunch of buffoons, I guess, and they want to divide and this and that, and he, you know, gives the numbers that... But all that to say, it's bad, because there's also now a lawsuit, which is is not here in the video um but there's a lawsuit now and ali beth is going to talk about that and we'll look at that here in a minute i guess in virginia you can sue your church which is kind of stupid but we can see this from first corinthians 6 a very uh, raucous book as far as paul's concerned he's he's beaten up them with all sorts of uh doctrine because they're just acting like total idiots i mean first Corinthians, you think Church, your church is bad. Just look at Corinthian, the Corinthian church. Now, therefore, it is already an utter failure for you to go to law against one another. Why do you not accept wrong? Why do you, why do you not rather let yourselves be cheated? That's 1 Corinthians 6, 7. That was New KJV, uh, the Living Translation says... Even to have such lawsuits with one another is to defeat you. Why not just accept the injustice and leave it at that? Why not let yourselves be cheated? End quote. Did you see that? So these people are saying they weren't voted. I think that's the lawsuit. They're somehow suing the elders uh, because of the meeting from several weeks ago. And uh, hey, we didn't get counted. Making a big stink. Now, are they seeking unity? No, of course not. They're not seeking unity at all. And they should repent of that. That Those, however many people, however many that is, they should repent of that. But likewise, David Platt should not be appointing these men who are causing such consternation. There's a reason why people are having issue with these men, right? Even if there's, say, a handful, say maybe there's 10 people in this church. They're like, man, our church is going woke. It's going liberal. They're going to do this and that. And it may or may not be, right? They, but they have a suspicion, Right? Nobody's at MacArthur's church, for example, and saying, oh, yeah, they're going woke. You know, or if you want to stick with Southern Baptists, say uh, Robert Jeffers Church there in Dallas. Thousands and thousands of people. Big churches, these are. I doubt anyone is there like, yeah, Jeffers is total woke. He's not. Now, he's a little bit more of a Trump supporter and Trump lover than I would prefer. But <laughs> there's a reason why these people are doing this. Now, is Platt going to ask that? Is he going to investigate that? Or is he just standing on his high and mighty horse, as Big Eva guys do, and say, ah, 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 no, 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 you guys are a bunch of clan members, you're a bunch of neocons, you're a bunch of crazies, you're a bunch of whatever, not neocons, neo-Nazis, uh, whatever you are, and you're just not seeking unity. Now, they aren't seeking unity. That's correct. And bringing in people from Maine and Florida and all over, that's not how you handle that at all. That's also abjectly wrong and sinful. But let's watch this, and it's Ali Beth talking about David French. He says, the congregants object to what they perceive as a pastoral embrace of critical race theory, and they assert the Bible alone contains teaching sufficient to address America's race problems. You can read the comprehensive complaint against Platt and his team here. All right, did you catch that? Did you see that? What does he say? They, so this is, da this is Ali Beth. Uh, again, I, I think she's great uh, overall. Definitely highly recommend her. Anyway. She is talking about David French, um, who's talking about David Platt in this whole situation. Now, David French is very much uh, a big Eva, Trump-hating, 
never Trumper, like to the hilt. Like he's, I don't even, I don't know much about David French, but what I do know is not good. He's, he's not at all, he's too smart. He's too smart for his own good. He's too intellectual for his own good. He tries to be, you know, middle or something, and he's, he's just not. He's, he's, we'll leave it at that. He's not very good. Now, he says, the congregants object to what they perceive, notice that, as pastoral embrace of critical race theory. So right there, there's the issue. The congregants, the people who are there, are saying, David Platt, hmm. so like five, six, eight years ago, you were so great and so big in evangelism and the nations, and you're president of IMB, and then 2017, you become our pastor, and things are starting to change a little bit. What's going on? And they assert, listen to this, this is the back to David French, the Bible alone contains teaching sufficient to address America's race problems. So French is saying that these people, as he calls conservative in scare quotes here, I'll see in a moment, that the Bible addresses, is sufficient to address these things. And he's saying these people say that. But his implication is it's not. See that? And that's ultimately the issue, is the Bible isn't really sufficient to deal with America's racist problems. Since when? Since when is it not? Since when? Tell me, Mr. French. Uh, because it is. It is. I mean, again, there's no Jew or Greek, right? They all are one in Christ. Breaking down the, the wall of hostility, which existed in the Old Covenant, which we'll see here in a moment that David French just likes to cite the Old Covenant when it's convenient for him and very, very not convenient for him. He'll lambast those who do or, or hint at it. But the wall of hostility, remember the, the court of the Gentiles is where everybody could go at the temple. And it was everybody, anybody could worship there. Men, women, Gentiles, everybody. Then there was the court of the women, women, Jewish women. And then the court of the men inside that. And then inside that was uh, the, where the priests went. And then inside that was the Holy of Holies. So high walls, restriction, all sorts of division within Judaism, the temple, the structure. Now, again, there were provisions and God is calling everyone everywhere to repent even from the beginning. But the point is with the structure of how the temple was in Judaism, that's what it was. Now, Christ breaks down these things. Christ deals with sin. What's, what's racism but sin? What's, what's injustice but sin? How then would David French say we should, if the Bible doesn't have these things and is sufficient. What should we do? Contents of these link lengthy documents, David French says, they include complaints that Platt and his NBC, his NBC colleague, Pastor Mike Kelsey, marched in the Christian Black Lives Matter march, and that Kelsey has endorsed the CRT concepts of systemic racism and white privilege. Uh, they also condemn Platt uh, for arguing that the absence of overt prejudice does not absolve one of the problems of racism and racialization, and includes that quote that I read earlier um so then david french gives his um his response or his interpretation of all of this according to scripture and then i responded on twitter he has not responded to me i don't know if he will so i feel comfortable talking about it here since i've already tried to uh, uh, engage with him individually so then david french responds to this whole thing he says platt is biblically and historically right it's his detractors who are biblically and historically wrong uh he says that the conservatives he puts in scare quotes have placed a secular political frame around an issue with profound religious significance um, and then he says, uh, to understand the flaw in their argument, he's talking about Platt's dissenters. Let's first turn to biblical, the biblical text. He cites second Samuel 21 during the King, uh, the reign of King David, Israel was afflicted with three years of famine. When David sought the face of the Lord regarding the crisis, God said there was blood guilt on Saul and on his house. Uh, Saul was king before David and God was punishing Israel years after Saul's regime because of Saul's sin. It was the next king, David's responsibility to make things right. Um, and then he gives some other examples of this, of Israel committing sins in the past and then having to, um, the next generations having to seek God's forgiveness about these sins. So notice that. So has this Kelsey guy, I assume is his last name, has he embraced a Christian BLM? Has he embraced these, these critical race theory? I mean, we already see David Platt saying certain things. You know, as a white pastor, I'm this, and I've got to apologize, and these types of things that he said in the past. Which, again, you're, you're showing partiality. You're showing distinction. 
You want to use the world's terms? The Bible doesn't use the term black, white, yellow, red. <laughs> red and yellow, black and white, they are precious in his sight. Remember that song? Now it's shades of brown from dark to light. It should be because everybody's a brown. This isn't white, ladies and gentlemen. Look at your skin right now. It's not whatever color they say it is. And who's actually white anyway? Because 100 years ago, Irish people and Italian people, they weren't white. It was only English people. Now you look at them and there's even Jewish people that are white. Just because you have light skin, you're now white? Well, that's unacceptable. All right, so here's the thing. She's looking at this. French is talking about it. And the bottom line is, French doesn't believe that the Bible cannot deal with racism. That it, somehow it, it, it's so heinous that it's outside the Bible. It's outside God's word. That everything pertaining to life and godliness accepts racism, right? Except injustices. But I have to ask again, since when, David French? It's just new. Like, it's just, well, I'll just because, because I said so. So, again, these people have some reason. They have a reason. They look at this guy. Now, I assume maybe this Kelsey guy is one of the new uh, elders or elders proposed. And people are like, I don't really like that this guy is marching in these BLM rallies and so on and so forth. But or Christian Black Lives Matter rallies, or whatever they're doing. But it's, it's, not to discount, it's not to discount racism. It's not to say that there isn't sin. I'm not saying that at all. What I am saying is, it's not as big, as, as big of a deal as people say it is, number one. <clears throat> number two, it is dealt with in the scripture, right? When you come to Christ, it, you, you, you can't be part of the clan, right? You also can't be part of the Black Panther party. You can't be part of BLM. You can't be part of these certain things uh, uh, because you're a Christian. And these ideologies are being raised up against the knowledge of Christ that Colossians talks about. All of a sudden, people act as though, well, not this though. This is special. People have always thought that. Oh, this is special. There's no way I can deal with this sin. There's no way that that sin can be dealt with in the scripture. We got to try something else. They did this 170 years ago with Genesis and the origin of the world, right? And we have Darwin's natural um, natural processes ideology and uh, the Darwin's book, Origin of Species, and on and on. And he wasn't new to it. It's been 100 years before that with the idea of naturalism and, and so on and so forth, creating um, everything. And, well, we're not going to really pertain to God's word here. And a lot of Christians bought into this. This was, I looked at another video you can see here with uh, Charles Spurgeon. Maybe it's here. It's up here. Um, and the downgrade controversy and people embracing the ideology of materialistic evolution. Well, people are doing that now. And this is our modern evolutionary thinking. And this is our modern downgrade. It really is. And so the congregation, albeit they did it sinfully and wrong by bringing in people who are not members active anymore. But they're nevertheless there. Oh, we're going to vote. Yeah, we're, we live in Maine normally, but we're going to vote against you guys. That was wrong. But they have reason to do it. So David French goes back to Samuel, right? Hey, well, y'all, why don't we look at the Bible, for example? Why don't we deal with the, the Bible? Now, it's ironic. <laughs> it's so stupid, really. And the guy's being foolish, to be at best. David French is saying, he just said, these people, conservatives, quote unquote, say that the Bible's sufficient. His implication, it's not sufficient, obviously. That's why people embrace critical race theory and so on. That's why we see other people, professors and pastors and the like, embrace it. Now, they're still going to say, oh, it's a gospel issue. We're all the gospel above all. Oh, preach the gospel. Oh, it's a gospel. Blah, blah, blah. And they just kind of tack gospel on because like they sprinkle on you know, gospel sprinkles, you know, rainbow gospel sprinkles and little chocolate drops on top of their melting ideology in the hot summer sun. It's not going to work, right? It's just not going to work because the foundation is as squishy as ice cream when it's 100 degrees outside. So they're doing this and David French uses the Bible. Oh, that's weird. So the Bible's not sufficient, David French, but they, hold on conservatives. I'm a real conservative. You guys are a bunch of buffoons. Maybe that's a little polemic, but regardless, he has disdain for people like you and me. If you're watching this and you agree with some of this content, 
he probably doesn't like you. David French is, is the highfalutin sort of guy. He just is. And I, again, I don't know his heart, but his fruit is pretty rotten, we'll just say. So he says the Bible, these guys say the Bible's sufficient. I say, well, he doesn't say that it's not, but he implies that it's not. Then he goes and uses 2 Samuel, which ironically is in the Bible. Weird. And then he says other passages about Israel and so on. But this is the same David French that got mad at Donald Trump multiple times and mad at Donald Trump supporters for saying, you know, America is a Christian nation and kind of treating uh, America as the new Israel and the church is replacing Israel and on and on and on and on and citing Old Testament passages as support for Trump or, or support for his policies and so on. And he's like, well, we're not this and we're not that. And it's like, okay, so all you're doing is being duplicitous, David French, because you're saying... You guys can't, we're not in a the, uh, the, theocracy anymore. We're not in the old covenant. You know, whatever his argument might have been. I'm not going to spend any time finding it, but you could if you really want to. But he's said those things and implied those things in his writing and his, in his uh, speaking. But then he goes and uses the Bible as if it's in a theocracy, as if we're still under the old covenant. Now, I believe that we can still use the law today, especially the Ten Commandments in particular, to point people to Christ. Because God's law, not one jot or tittle will pass away until all is fulfilled, Jesus says. So it's very applicable. But we're not under the old covenant anymore, right? Circumcision isn't necessarily a thing, though medically it's probably fine and a good thing. We don't, we don't keep the Sabbath on Saturday. We have the eternal Sabbath, Jesus being that picture. And once you're in Christ, you're actually keeping the Sabbath. You're fulfilling the fourth commandment. And so these things actually do matter, but we're not under a theocratic rule any longer. We're just not. Now, God is theocratic and everything pertaining to life and godliness comes from the scripture and everybody has a knowledge of God placed in their heart and either they reject or embrace the Lord. But the bottom line is he's using, speaking out of both sides of his mouth. Over here, he's saying this, that's, you can't, you can't, America's not Israel. You know, you right wing, left, you know, whatever he's grumpy about. Oh, Donald Trump's just a bunch of da, 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 da. But is he as critical of Biden as he was about Trump? Of course not. And that's what the elites don't like. The elites are only a few people, right? They don't like the populace rising up. They'll use terms like nationalism as if that's bad, like to like your nation, Okay. Or populist, as if something that's popular and the people is bad. But that's always the elite saying that. That's those in the mainstream media, all the cable news especially, and a lot of these elites, these big Eva types and so on. So we can see them. What they're doing is, especially David French here, he's just being totally duplicitous. Sadly, but that's what he's doing. And it's like, are we in a new, new covenant? Or are we in the old covenant? What is it? So Religion News Service, it says... Accused on July 20th, um, the church was blamed and accused Platt of su uh, stuffing ballot boxes. Accused by Platt for stuffing ballot boxes, using inactive members for sermon uh, and, and so on from his sermon on July 4th. So again, that says what? Regenerate, active, aka just members, right? You're here, you're a member of this church. Which church are you a part of? Oh, I'm a member of this church. That's the language I use. I've used that for a while. We were members at a church in California. We moved to Kentucky. And a few months later, they said, hey, you're no longer a member. You're being removed. But if we go back to that place, we're not going to be like, how dare you remove me? We don't live here anymore. I don't serve here anymore. I don't give my money to you anymore. We might have, you know, supported them a little bit here and there. But we're not consistent. We're not supporting that church. You support your local church, viewer. Serve. Pray. Listen to the sermon. Sing. Give money. Support your pastor. Support your, your leaders. Please do that. That's, that's your call as a Christian. You live in this area. You find the best church that's closest to you. And you go to it. And you serve there. And you make it better. You don't say, well, the church is here for, for me. I'm just going to kick back. And, you know, whew, man, it's been a rough week. Give me a good sermon. Give me, give me something good. Give me some, I want to sing some good songs. Because they're all about me, and me, and me, and me, and me. And the church, we are not immune to this. The world does this. And we expect it from the world to be selfish and so on. But the church, we should be seeking to love one another, right? Jesus says that the world will know you by 
your love for one another, not your division, not your suing, not your bringing lawsuit. These people have a reason, okay? And we'll wrap up with this. These people have a reason to do this because apparently there's people marching in parades and supporting this and maybe saying a tweet about that, just like people had a reason to question uh, Ed Litton and his ideology and his views on ministry. His wife preaching, a weird view of, of the Trinity and other things in his doctoral statement. Those are all brushed under the rug. He was still voted in. And now we've all this plagiarism stuff. More on that later. You can check out. I've got other videos on that. I'm sure you've probably seen those maybe. If not, check them out. What David French is doing, by the way, is I'm going to call it persnickety hermeneutics. Or particular, if you want to be more specific. But persnickety hermeneutics or Bible buffet interpretation. Where you just kind of pony up to the Bible and you're like, yeah, I'm going to take this. I'm going to take that. I'm going to do this. I'm not going to do that. No, definitely not that. That's way too healthy. Uh, that's convicting. No, I don't want that. Ooh, that'll, that'll taste good. And you go back to your seat and you sit down. And then you write a blog. And that's not how you do Bible. <laughs> that's you. God gave us the text. It's stood for centuries. And it's enough. The Bible is sufficient. The Bible deals with people's sin. It deals with people where they are. It deals with reality. And if David French or even David Platt can't see that, I'm sorry, but I and hopefully you, the viewer, can see that that's wrong. They're on the wrong side of history. They're biblically wrong. Citing 1 Samuel after you said the Bible's not really sufficient is stupid in every way and completely hypocritical. It's funny, I just saw this quote from G.K. Chesterton. Nine times out of ten, it is the crude word that condemns evil and the refined word that excuses it. So not to find license, but this type of thinking is stupid. The Bible is sufficient. It is to, pertaining to everything pertaining to life and godliness. Now, it might be hard. I don't, I, don't, I don't disagree that it's difficult. It's difficult. This world is difficult. The Bible doesn't talk about all sorts of things. Right? We don't want it to. Why would we want it to? Talk about changing your oil or, or how to fly a plane or how to fell a tree. Really? There's no cats mentioned, right? Dogs are mentioned in a derogatory bad way. Now we have them as little pets and we, you know, we've genetically engineered them and mutated them so they're, you know, tiny little thing that sits in your purse or rides around in your car. No, dogs are garbage collectors. <laughs> right? They're, they're, they're not pets. Not historically, not biblically. So you're all sinning if you have a pet dog, right? You see how that works? No, of course not. I'm not going to say that. But some people could go that route. Well, the Bible doesn't deal with this. The Bible's not sufficient. Lies. That's lies. Of course the Bible's sufficient. Well, we got to use other theories and other, other mechanisms. No, we don't. No, we don't. So this has been a longer video. I appreciate you if you've made it all the way to the end. Thank you so much. Um, again, share it, please. Uh, and like and subscribe. I'd really appreciate that. It does help us out and um, helps me make more videos. Hoping to continue to uh, generate this, hoping to build this channel um, to get the message out, to also just, yeah, be against the world, but for the sake of it, because there's not enough truth out there. Uh, the, the truth is constantly pushed down by lies. It's constantly blocked and clouded and uh, I feel compelled to use the mechanisms that I have and the ability that I have to do this. So this sure. is the goal, right? And I've said this before. Again, I appreciate all the new subs. Thank you so much. Please uh, continue uh, to watch and support, comment. And most of all, I want you to, to, to see these things and be able to you know, read a David French article or read a tweet or see these certain things, even on CNN, and not just shun it and say, ah, you know, I'm, I'm going to go hide away. I'm going to be Amish. I'm going to go live on a farm. I'm going to just, no, we have to be in the world, but we don't have to be of the world, right? And it's, and it's, and it's us, it's the Christian, it's the gospel message that is the one that gives life. That's what it is. It's not my ideology or my thoughts or my whatever, but it's, it's the gospel. And we're supposed to be pushing against those thoughts and those philosophies, everything raised up against the knowledge of Christ, as Colossians 2 tells us. It's important. It matters deeply. Maybe it's Colossians 1. Anyway, my goal, helping you be against the world for the sake of the world. Until next time, take care.